when BioWare takes one part kung fu. Once you put on your kung fu goggles, it gets crazy. We have everything from magical or impossible fighting styles all the way to the gambit of things that are more realistic. Mixes it with one part video game. You know anybody who doesn't like people kicking ass and flying through the air? Now you put it into a game and you got something. And throws in a dash of Eastern mythology. What's really interesting about the wuxia genre is it's been around for literally thousands of years. They end up with their most ambitious RPG to date. All the pieces come together. It's magical. There's no other way to describe it other than just sheer joy. And it's going to completely blow people away. This is the making of Jade Empire. Welcome to BioWare. Uh, I'm going to be taking you through a little bit of a tour of some of our offices so you can actually see some of the things we're doing here on the Jade Empire. Since 1995, a Canadian game developer called BioWare has been taking gamers into fantastic worlds. Well, BioWare is most certainly among the elite uh, game developers out there. The, the thing that made them really, you know, fantastic, you know, like Baldur's Gate and, and Neverwinter and things like that, is, is that they really have the ability to, to grasp not only like all the elements that are required for a role-playing game, but also they know how to tell a story. Only one way out for you. And that's really what they're masters of. In 2003, Bioware ventures to a galaxy far, far away with the release of Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic. Those guys made a Star Wars game that Star Wars fans have wanted since Return of the Jedi. The nice old Republic struck a chord with so many people. They felt something beneath the surface and it touched people in a way that some of our previous games had a little more difficulty touching them. And its element, KOTOR, was like a fantastic RPG. It would have been great without the Star Wars license. But by using the Star Wars license and giving the player the ability to choose their own destiny, something that we all want to do in our day-to-day -day lives, giving the player that really made KOTOR stand out. Knights of the Old Republic wins critical acclaim and goes on to become a platinum bestseller for the Xbox. But rather than working on a sequel to their new hit, BioWare decides to follow through on an old idea. It was actually about uh, uh, 10 years ago that Greg and Ray first thought of it. Jade Empire is a game that we've been thinking about at BioWare for a really long time. And I know both Ray and I personally, as well as a whole bunch of other people here, are really passionate about it. We wanted to wait until the, the right moment in BioWare's uh, history as a company to make a game like Jade Empire. It's our first new intellectual property. We wanted to wait until the people here had the experience to make a game, build a story that's going to be awesome, make a real-time fighting system, fast-paced real-time martial arts combat, and also wanted to, to wait until we had the right system to develop it on. The concept of martial arts role-playing game would have real resonance within the video game industry. The Canadian developer trades in their lightsabers for nunchucks and starts development on an Xbox exclusive called Jade Empire. Let's take a look at one of our designers' offices. Designers, of course, are responsible for the way the game shapes up. I think they like new, interesting challenges. I mean, this gives them a chance to go out and do something different. We wanted to build up a reputation with our fans and also feel like we had the experience inside the company to really do just an amazing job on our first new intellectual property. And Jade Empire is that new IP. Creating a new brand is the toughest thing in the video game business now. And that's a very courageous thing to do, but at the same time, Bioware has enough cred out there that people are gonna go, I'm gonna play Jade Empire, even though I don't know anything about this universe and it's not sci-fi. We had two goals. Number one, we wanted to make our first wholly made setting at Bioware to be something that was really fun, interesting, a little bit different. So this is an example of the use of sweeping vistas to help identify where you are in the world so that the player could navigate without constantly referring to the map. And the other goal, I think, is we wanted to get action games into RPG gaming. 
merging of the two genres is something that's very exciting. BioWare's bold new direction will take gamers into worlds unlike any other. The reason I'm standing here looking imposing is because back there is some super secret stuff that I can't show anyone. So let's just say whatever's back there, it's going to be really, really cool. Baby, do these jeans make my butt look big? No, you just have a really huge ass. The jeans are fine. We're gonna miss the movie. Brutally honest, watch X-Play. My brain can no longer withstand the massive suck from this game. I think the designers were actually on crap. Craptastic! You said my bubble booty was a good thing. X-Play, the most brutally honest video game reviews on TV. Weeknights at 11 p.m. For Jade Empire, Bioware will create a new world unlike any seen by Western audiences. The good thing about working with something like Dungeons and Dragons or Star Wars that we did in the past is they had so much source material. If you had a question about something, you could find it in one of the books. But the thing is with Jade Empire, of course, is we had to make everything from scratch. It's uh, very stylized, very nuanced, very kinetic. <laughs> that we look to the experts in Hong Kong cinema. We first, of course, watched as many Kung Fu movies as we could. We also watched, you know, every movie we could find. And we ran the spectrum from, like, the, the cheesiest, the stupidest, most ridiculous martial arts movie from the 60s or 70s, all the way to really, really good Asian films like uh, Hero or Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Once someone starts watching all these and you put on your Kung Fu goggles, and once the Kung Fu goggles are on, it gets crazy. You come up with some amazing ideas that actually transfer really well into video games. What's really interesting about the wuxia genre is, is really how untapped it has been by Western developers. It's been around for literally thousands of years. When we started work on Jade Empire, one of the first things we did was start with the primary source. In many cases, the kung fu movies we see are all references back to that. So we went back to the original source, things like Journey to the West, Outlaws of the Marsh, these really, really old Chinese novels, hundreds of years old in many cases. For my part, I delved more deeply into myths and arts of ancient China. If all of those myths were true, then Jade Empire is the world that would have resulted from that. So if dragons really existed, if magic really was like that, if people could actually fly, that is the sort of thing that you have in Jade Empire, and that's the sort of world we're trying to create. It's not clearly reality. Demon form. You can transform into a 20-foot monster and run around stomping your enemies and shoot fireballs out of your hands. It's clearly not real. But the way of playing with that and making it seem sort of like a dream world or like a mythical world out of the past is very important. You see all kinds of cool settings, everything from lush jungles to snowy mountain fortresses. That It's not a literal adaptation of the myths and legends of ancient China, but rather more inspired by those. So we're creating a brand new fantasy world. It brings an entirely new world a whole different conception of how magic works. There's a different idea of, of what sorts of monsters and demons are running around. How people get more powerful, what a hero really is. Bioware must make the content of Jade Empire accessible to Western audiences without straying too far from its Eastern roots. We're hoping that this is going to be you know, globally successful, but we have to make sure that some of the more obscure elements aren't going to be lost on people. We had to try and find almost the universal elements that would appeal to everyone while maintaining that wonderful flavor that you have in all those books. There are certain characters we felt we couldn't make the game without. Outlaws of the Marsh has over a hundred primary characters. This is something you'd never see in Western literature. We knew we wanted the tradition of the esoteric magicians. We looked back to China's first emperors for a sort of imperial inspiration. That was quite challenging. We realized we had to do some homework. There's little bits of folklore, little bits of mythology. We try to collect all of those, read through them, and then start talking about what made them Chinese, what made them exotic or strange, but also make it accessible. After watching hundreds of kung fu films and countless hours of research, the storyline for Jade Empire takes form. Basically what you're looking at in Jade Empire is starting the game as a young martial arts master, been training under Master Lee. He's not a real talkative fellow, and he hasn't really told you everything, but everyone's kind of got the sense that he's about to reveal something big. 
normally a spirit would journey and go to the wheel of life and be reincarnated, but somehow that isn't happening. That's something that's affecting the entire empire. And that's really the main plot motivator. So you're gonna find out why. As with previous Bioware releases, morality will play a key role in the game. We really struggle to put a lot of uh, extra choice in this game. It's not just black and white changes the way the general game develops. Are these floating stones not wondrous? The choice is really important. There's multiple endings. That is a dark philosophy, but I would not dare to argue with you. Good and evil, but with more of a gray zone in between. The path of peace is the only way to a good life. Giving the player the chance to justify their actions. I have irrefutable proof that might makes right. <laughs> So you end up with some of our most complex villains because their motivations aren't just, yeah, I'm evil. It's, I'm doing this because this is what's right. So they make pretty compelling villains. Having black and white or good and evil choices should always be part of the experience. If you're just trying to be a good character, trying to do the right thing, that should be an option. And if you want to be the evil guy, if you want to, you know, have fun and, and do some of the things you can never do in your actual life. Where the great choices come in is that they enrich the experience. It's more like real life. The setting isn't the only new territory Bioware will tackle. The lightning quick martial arts action of Jade Empire will require them to approach in-game combat a whole new way. I went to a Russian MP3, I went to a Russian MP3 site and bought 20 albums for five bucks. Information before it gets shut down. So what if he won Best Actor? I just found naked photos of him on The truth before it gets filtered. Two hours ago, I uploaded unauthorized photos from the new movie. Cool crap before it's just crap. The show that gets it before it gets out. Attack of the Show, weeknights, live at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what you want. If you want to stick to that style, you're going to have to do multiple strikes. We can make one up. One. Two, three, four. For many people, the biggest draw of Eastern mythology is Kung Fu. To capture the fast-paced action of Eastern martial arts, BioWare will have to create a whole new combat system. Can you do the hurricane kick? It is a big departure for us in many ways. We've never really attempted a role-playing game with real-time action combat. Jade Empire is, is the first time we've taken over role-playing games and moved it from a turn-based system uh, into a, a real-time action combat system. The decision to make a real-time combat system was really came from like the, just what you're trying to do in the game. Like when you become a martial arts master, like Jade Empire, you know, just to really do the material justice, you, you really want to feel like you're in control. Like, we have over 30 styles, and, and we're getting a couple more uh, all the time. <laughs> And the good thing about this is you can change the styles instantly. Paralyzing. You can use the combos used from other things, and you'll just be astounded by the new effects you have. Legendary Fist. So using that tactically is really what makes the game fun. So if you, you get in a group of enemies, there's a whole bunch of them, they're all surrounded, you switch to a, a really fast style, you use the clearing move, which is A and B combo, and everyone jumps out of the way, and then you switch back to a heavy one and concentrate on one opponent again. And that's all really fast, it's really intuitive. We were really excited that that came together so very well. So we're going to take a look at the combat team. And these are the guys who are really making the guts of Jade Empire. What they do, essentially, is balance the combat, make sure that everything's functioning, and they've got quite a few tricks in their sleeves as well. Demon form. We have what are called transformation styles. So at certain points in the game, when you defeat some enemies, monsters, really, they'll drop their spirit. Uh, you're able to capture their spirit before it takes off. By having the spear, by stealing it, you're able to transform into this creature later on in combat. The Kung Fu master is deadly with just his fists, but he's even deadlier when he's armed. There are uh, five different weapon styles, of which you can use a, a variety of different weapons with. There's a, a single sword, um, twin swords, twin axes, uh, which you can use other large weapons with one in each hand, as well as a staff and a spear. There are still upgradable weapons. So for instance, I can advance longsword style in many different ways, and I can add speed and power to it. I can make it more defensive. In addition, there's the, the dragon amulet. And this is it's actually on my shirt there. This is a, an amulet that the player gets as part of his birthright. And it's essentially a collection of empty slots. And you can slot in specific gems that work like inventory items in a traditional role-playing game. So you can add to your armor. You can add to your chi refresh rate, so you can make your chi regenerate. 
can add special abilities like flame or lightning. And this becomes an alternate way of enhancing your abilities. But it also gives you a lot of tactics. You have body, mind, and spirit. Body is basically how much damage that the player can take. Mind is influences their focus ability. Focus. I recall. Which is their ability to actually slow down time, or their ability to concentrate and use more complex styles. Spirit is your chi, or your magical internal energy. Chi is it's a fascinating piece of Chinese tradition, really Eastern tradition. So when we started laying down the roots for the combat system, we knew qi had to be an integral part. So you can use qi to heal yourself. You can use it to make your attacks more powerful. If you learn magic styles, you have to use qi at that point to power them. But it also, you know, gives you different dialogue skills as well. So if you have a more powerful body, for example, then maybe you're better at intimidating people. Come to finish what you started. <laughs> you? Clumsy as an ox! If you have a more powerful mind, maybe you have a, an intuition sense that you can use to increase the role playing and to find things you wouldn't normally find. You are the one who stole the scrolls of the Seven Wisdoms. You do not stand alone, my friend. BioWare enlists the help of real-world martial artists to make sure the characters in the game fight like true kung fu masters. We went and motion captured all animation in the game with uh, martial arts masters. Some of them are from as far away as mainland China. The results are amazing. We used about four different uh, stunt people, one female and three males, and they had a background basically in various martial arts. And put up with a lot of full days of punishment <laughs> for the game. All creatures in our game are basically hand animated, and that's where all the animators have fun. We actually acted out ourselves, like acting like a monster. BioWare is already taking gamers into uncharted territory with Jade Empire's blend of Eastern mythology and kung fu. But the team plans to delve even deeper into the world of Wushu with a unique cast of characters. Jade Empire is different from everything the company has ever done before. And the cast of characters they create is just as unique. We're going to look at some pictures of models for the game. And this is the character, Furious Ming, that we uh, created based on him. There's a variety of different starting characters. Tiger Shan is our big strong guy. Blue the Lotus Blossom is our balanced woman. Furious Ming is a fast male. Radiant Gen Z is a fast female. Scholar Ling is a magical female who's got a lot of chi. The most memorable, the ones people will, will latch on to, I think, are the followers. Dawnstar is one of the people that grew up with you at the school. She has this sort of strange ability. She can actually see ghosts often when other people can't, and sometimes she can even talk to them. You have guys like Black Rowan. He's a drunken axeman. There's no other way to describe him except maybe smelly, dirty, drunken, psychotic axeman. There's Kang the Mad, and Kang the Mad is the one that builds and upgrades your flyer. The flyer can be used in the flyer minigame, which is a top-down shooter. It's also the way that you can travel around the world. Climb away from the wife is welcome, but only if it is less dangerous. There's Henpecked Ho, whose uh, name says it all. He's had a troubled life. He is coming! Death's hand is coming! Death's hand is coming! Yeah, that's great. And a mix of Hollywood and local Canadian talent gives these characters voices of their own. We have 352 characters that speak in the game. So to get those 352 characters, we're using 80 different actors, over half of them being in Los Angeles, the rest of them being here in Edmonton. So simultaneously, we're running two studios over a period of 12 weeks, and it's just been a fantastically huge process. It's incredibly hard. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said anything different. It's very, very complex. All of our characters are fully voice acted. My vigorous philosophical discussion always puts a spring in my step. There's a lot of iteration that goes into the writing of them, and then you've got to make sure that writing works with every single choice the player could possibly make. BioWare even goes so far as to create a completely new language to be spoken by the inhabitants of Jade Empire. We hired a, a linguist who actually wrote the languages for the game, the Thofan language, and he has backgrounds specifically in actually Japanese and different Asian languages. So he wanted to give us this language that felt like an Asian language, but wouldn't be construed to be any of the Asian languages. It was definitely a challenge for actors. An extensive amount of view will really help tell the story because then you you start putting an actual voice to the characters and then it makes the character more believable right now we're, we're gonna have a 
at least 14,000 lines of dialogue in this game. The minister may dispute your claim when he arrives. But voice actors aren't all that's needed to breathe life into the world of Jade Empire. How was that, Mike? It's really good. Because it's our first original IP, we have a lot of creative freedom in the design of the sound. Like with Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, we used a lot of, of course, Star Wars sounds. You can't have a Star Wars game without a lightsaber sound. With Jade Empire, we have a lot of creative freedom. We can go ballistic. For one thing, the music, we're probably going to have 90 different tunes. Shut up! There's a lot of, lot of music, maybe close to two hours of music in it. For the sound effects, the final game will probably have close to 2,000. Just the, the sheer volume and sheer variety. The music is fantastic for the game. It has a definite ring of authentic Chinese instruments through it as a theme. The environment is so lush, and so it's important to have music that accentuates. If you're exploring a scholar's garden, you expect a light musical theme with kind of, you know, those chimes going in the background. But if you get into battle, you expect the Chinese drums. BioWare will use every ounce of power from the Xbox to bring together all the elements of Jade Empire. Because we know we're going to be coming out for Xbox, we can optimize specifically for that piece of hardware. The depth of the game just wouldn't be possible in the other system. As the 2005 release date nears, anticipation for Jade Empire continues to grow, and the team behind it is eager to finally get their game out to the public. Do you know anybody who doesn't like uh, people kicking ass and flying through the air? And now you put it into a game and you remove the wires and you got something. I knew that this was Bioware's best story. This amazing story that is going to completely blow people away. When I saw Jade Empire for the first time, it was love at first sight. And the game's going to be awesome. It's a magical experience when we get to the point where the ideas that you talked about are now real gameplay. There's no other way to describe it other than just pure joy to be able to play the game that you, you dreamed of. All of a sudden, the game comes to life, and you're like, wow. We're really trying to take everything we've learned over the past decade at Bioware and put it all into Jade Empire. And we're really striving to make the best possible game, the best game we've ever made. Ah!